Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about how Dungeons & Dragons is helping me run Marvel Multiverse role-playing game, and how it helped me prep for a, a game that I'm running tomorrow. And I just wanted to kind of talk through my journey to my um, session prep for tomorrow's Marvel Multiverse RPG game. All right, so let's jump into this. So, so I am a long time Dungeons and Dragons dungeon master. I have never stopped running Dungeons and Dragons. I've run Dungeons and Dragons since 1982. Uh, started with the Red Box, uh, and now I'm here, <laughs> as Drake would say. Uh, so started, uh, yeah, so basically um, I started with, uh, you know, with the Red Box. And, um, and being a dungeon master has really helped me trust my instincts, I think. And I think that's where I've kind of landed is, um, so this, this Marvel Multiverse role-playing game that I'm running right now, uh, it, Marvel Multiverse, so I'm running a one, a one shot, right? And, um, the one shot came about because I was covering Marvel Multiverse role-playing game from the perspective of... Uh, it's a brand new title and it really is Dungeons and Dragons to the bone. It literally has Dungeons and Dragons written on the cover and Gary Gygax is listed on page two. Like it, it is, it's Dungeons and Dragons to the marrow, but it's also an, an incredible it, Marvel multiverse role playing game because of Matt Forbeck, who actually edited, uh, Gary Gygax's work. Uh, I was just really astounded with how much Matt Forbeck was able to do with this game. He's created a game that is really incredibly inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. The character sheets literally look identical, right? But where, but he fixed many Dungeons and Dragons problems, and then what he did is it is truly a Marvel multiverse role playing game in that you can build any Marvel hero, and the the book has a hundred Marvel heroes. It has a hundred Marvel heroes and villains in it, right? Fifty villains, fifty heroes. And it is, and because this game set about to make any Marvel, to make making any Marvel hero or villain at the exact level of detail of a player character, there are no non-player character detailed. You know, like in, in Dungeons and Dragons, you're like, oh, here's a non-player character. It's a sidekick. It's just a stab block. None of that happens here. There's no difference between the design of the non-player characters and the player characters, right? It's absolutely astounding. So I had somebody reach out to me and um, we started discussing the game. And then I was like, I'll, you know, I'll run a one shot for you. Let's, let's get this going. Well, it turns out that this player's favorite, absolute favorite um, uh, character in all of Marvel is Joe Fixit. Now, Joe Fixit is Gray Hulk. Okay. So it's Hulk. A little less strong, but with all of his intelligence, but also as a mob enforcer for Mr. Baron Getty, right? Uh, who is a who is a casino owner? And you're like, wait a second, Hulk is a casino owner? Like Hulk is the servant to a casino owner? Very unusual, right? And I and when the player was like, this is my main jam, man. Like this is the character I want to play most. I was like, oh boy, where where are we going with this? Right, because I'm like, well, you know, this is coming out of a 1986 comic book, uh, and um, and I don't really, I'm not, I'm not fully understanding like what what is the point of making Hulk like giving a Hulk a Tommy gun? Like, what is the point of this? Right? And I really didn't fully understand it. Right? But I didn't back down from it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna run a one shot, and I'm gonna let you play the character that you want to play the most. But then I was inviting in other players from my normal group and bringing them to the table as well. And I was like, how am I going to fit normal Marvel heroes with um, this, uh, you know, with this Joe Fitzit character, right? It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And so, but I, but Dungeons and Dragons has given me the courage to realize I can get the game positioned, right? Oh, we're going to run an Eberron game. We're gonna run, and and it's gonna be four people, and um, and it's gonna be ever on focus, right? And then just let the let the momentum of the game begin start. Let things continue forward. Let things lock into place, right? And so I did that. I trusted myself, 
And just yesterday, it finally clicked in. And I was like, okay, I have an understanding of Joe Fixit. I know what he is. Joe Fixit is the uh, is the the main bodyguard. The main he is the uh, actually he's not the bodyguard. He's the main fixer, right? He handles problems. He produces for Mr. Barangetti. Mr. Barangetti has this incredibly uh, profitable um, has this incredibly profitable casino on Earth Six One Six in 1986. Right, because this is not happening today. Now, actually, they just released, they just re did a re release of Joe Fix It uh, 2023 Peter David, but it's really kind of a retelling. It's not even, it's it's like a re a relaunch rather than a reboot, right? Or maybe, yeah, you know, so it it's not really happening in today's comics. This is a 1985, 1986 story, right? So I was like, how am I going to get this done? So here's what I came up with. I said, okay, the, the story is going to start in current day Earth 616, right? And that means the normal Marvel world, right? And whatever player characters I have, they'll be playing Marvel heroes, and they will go to Asgard Broxton. Asgard Broxton, what's that? Broxton, Oklahoma, is um, the city where Thor established Asgard on Earth, okay? And so in my campaign, I'll be calling it Asgard Broxton which is a huge tract of land that is right next to at Broxton, Oklahoma. And it actually floats above the ground and on it, 8,000 Asgardians live. And Asgard, Asgard is no longer separate from Earth. It's literally floats above Earth, right near the city of Broxton, Oklahoma. And it is Asgard, Broxton. It is Asgard with 8,000 Asgardians living there on Earth, right? And so when the Bryfrost opens and somebody gates out from Asgard, they're gating out from Broxton, Oklahoma, right? Like, you know, that's where Heimdall is doing his thing now, right? And these Asgardians are living on Earth, but they're struggling to live on Earth. And the reason why is they're Asgardians. They're literally gods and demigods and little deities, right? But how do they make deals with, you know, with Oklahoma farmers, right? Like... You know, do they trade in magic, right? And the, and the, and so at the beginning of the game, I'm going to have the heroes go right to, right, Valkyrie. Thor will be gone, but Valkyrie will be there at Asgard, Asgard Broxton, just like Valkyrie is still serving um, Asgard in the uh, in the new movies. The Miss Mar the 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 Marvels movie showed Valkyrie. Um, and taking in Cree, uh, Cree refugees, right? I thought that was really interesting, uh, bringing in these Cree refugees, right? And actually, um, it wasn't even Cree refugees. I think it was Skrull refugees as well. Uh, so, so there's Cree and Skrull and like, but in in the game, uh, Valkyrie is going to draw the heroes to Asgard Broxton and say, "Listen, we have decided." We, we, you know, Asgard is going to be here. It's not going back up into some celestial space, right? Asgard will remain on Earth, right? And in my campaign, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to get destroyed. It's not going to, like, it's going to remain on Earth, right? So, now, if some player character does something really dynamic or extra extravagant to, to change that, so be it, and it'll change. But unless the players change it, I have no intention of changing it. Asgard will be on Earth, right? So, where does that land, right? And I thought this is really interesting. So I'm going to have Valkyrie say, listen, we need 10,000 gold pieces forged and unique, right? Identifiable and unique, right? And uh, I want to start our own currency here on Asgard Broxton to, so that there'll be something tangible that they can actually do commerce with the farmers around here, with the, you know, with the investors from New York, with investors from Japan, there'll be a functional material currency that they could trade in, right? Not just dollars, because they're struggling, you know, uh, you know the, the Oklahoma farmers are struggling to accept Asgardian magic as payment, and, uh, and the Asgardians are struggling to take dollars. The idea that they're gonna take money, you know, it's, it's kind of ludicrous. It, it doesn't make sense to Asgardians. We need a currency. A currency that the Asgardians have that they can start to pay out that will be valuable to the Earthlings, right? So Valkyrie is going to send the other heroes in the the other player character heroes in the game 
And it's only gonna take five, 10 minutes to set this up in the beginning and say, listen, I want you to go to 1986, 616, 1986 Earth Marvel. Uh, I want you to go to Earth 616, right? Our world, but back in the past, in 1986. And there, there is this incredibly successful casino owner, Mr. Baron Getty, and he has lots of bullion gold. I want you to have him forge 10,000 gold pieces and have them delivered here. And then when we do that, we will have these physical forged gold pieces, which will also be identifiable because they've been time slipped from 1986 to current. They will be completely unique, completely identifiable, and extremely difficult to copy. And we will establish an Asgardian Broxton currency, right? Then those player characters go back in time and connect with Joe Fixit. And Mr. Barangetti is gonna assign the job of getting these uh, uh, getting these time slipped, reforged gold coins, 10,000 of them. Uh, Joe Fixit now has the job of safely getting them minted and then helping the player characters to carry them back safely to Earth 616 in the current time, time in there, and then distributing them to the Asgardian Broxtons, right? So all of that is gonna be there. All of that is going to be, uh, you know, what's actually happening, but that's going to be what, you know, the, the structure, right? And this all came up in my mind and I was worried and now I'm extremely excited. I'm like, this is a great idea. There's lots of adventure here. There's lots of people who can oppose all these deals being get done. But Joe Fixit gets to be in his element, but he also has a reason to come into the current with where, where all the other Marvel heroes are. And, you know, and now we got Joe Fixit, you know, shooting a Tommy gun and it all works, right? And so I'm extremely excited about it. I'm extremely excited to be uh, back at the table because there, there was a bump in the road, but that is where I'm currently at. I really uh, appreciate you giving me a chance to share it with you. And I'd love to hear your ideas for how I can expand this or any other thing I can shift in this plan. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in a, every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.